My parents started the operation. Both of them grew up in Iowa. Um, always wanted to move to the West Coast, but their, uh, their uh, life took them to the East Coast to work on Angus operations in New York, and then eventually roundabout settled, in, settled here in Baker City, Oregon. You know, Lori and I are both very fortunate um, to be able to, um, uh, to, to have this legacy of this ranch. And it's been kind of, you know, the, the, the land is certainly a legacy, but more than that, it's, it's um, the lessons uh, that my parents taught us about hard work and work ethic and, and uh, striving to be the very best at what you do. One of the things that we're known for is is having you know cows that work in um, multiple environments, but also produce a product that really has you know, fetches a premium in the marketplace. In Angus cattle, I think you know, regardless of what which market you know you're going into and what the what the needs of that environment are, um, one of the one of the common goals that we have to have, I believe, in Angus breed is is um, marbling you know carcass traits and and um, and that's you know that's one of the things that you know our our consumer just demands um, yes we do produce cattle that 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 you know half extremely well we'll you know in the, some areas we'll produce cattle that that you know shed faster and then take fescue and 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 um, you know adapt to those environments and so we try to find cattle that will adapt to every environment but they all have to be structurally sound they got to be able to travel and move be fertile be good mothers low input and then finally you know have that have those carcass traits that the that the consumer want needs In 1973 was our very first um, bull sale that, 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 that we had. It was a production sale, so there were some females, and, but primarily bulls. As we were started probably for the first 20 years, we just had one sale a year. And then eventually we kind of built, um, and we um, thought, well, let's, let's you know, maybe try two sales a year. So we had a fall sale and a spring sale. And, um, and that, you know, we felt that was, that was pretty successful. And then we started working with um, with people that were a little further distant from from our operation, and um, started talking to more more of those customers. And we realized that, you know, maybe rather than making everybody travel to us, let's take some of these sales remote, and and take take the cattle to them, and and be able, be able to be exposed to more people. And so you know, um, our two sales that we have in Baker are definitely our. Uh, flagship sales, but it has been really rewarding to take these sales um, to customers that are at further distances, maybe have, you know, totally specific needs. Like for instance, our, our Wyoming sale is set up for high elevation bulls. And so we can kind of cater, you know, cater to those customers one-on-one -on -one and um, without, without a lot of other distractions. You know, California was an easy, uh, I think, fit for us because we were already selling quite a few bulls down into California. The sale we have in Cheyenne, Wyoming, um, you know, it, they're all PAP tested bulls for high, high elevation. That just seemed to make sense. Um, and we've been very fortunate to develop a really nice bull market there and meet a lot of great people that probably wouldn't, you know, to travel to Oregon would, would be a little bit more of an imposition. So if we can take the bulls to them and provide the kind of genetics that they are looking for, it's wonderful for us to be able to provide that. You know, we count the people that we've met and the people we get to work with on a daily basis, you know, really a wonderful, wonderful asset. Some of the cornerstone herd sires that, that we've had in the past uh, you know, back in the late 60s, we got a bull called Big John, Monterey Poe's a Big John, um, changed our herd. That's when cattle were going from small to, to large. The bull just had, um, had, had a lot of size. He had, again, a lot of carcass traits. Um, he kind of put us on the map. Uh, we were involved in a bull called Emulation Ambar 5522, the sire of EXT. 
Um, we had a bull called uh, AAR New Trend. These bulls are, I think, some of the some of the big game changers for us. Currently, you know, we're real excited about a bull called Whitewater. He checks a lot of boxes. You know, there he's probably probably has as much yield um, as any Angus bull, along with marbling. He's sound. He's very very attractive, and I think he's one of the really neat Angus bulls to come along the last several decades. I think our operation now has always been a forward-thinking, technology-forward company. My dad in the late 40s and early 50s, you know, was using artificial insemination. You know, one of the very first operations to, um, that, that he worked at, that, you know, to, to really utilize large-scale AI. And then, you know, when embryo transplant came about, we use that. We use a lot of IVF now. We use a lot of technology such as genomics, feed intake systems, a grow safe system. And all, our, all of these things, I think, are uh, designed to kind of better hone our cattle in on what the industry needs at the time. Um, you know, you have to, again, be a forward thinker to not only breed for what the industry needs now, but where the, where, what, what they'll need in five years and 10 years. And so uh, the fact that I think we have a pretty broad view of the entire cattle industry and what each segment really requires. And so uh, um, the brand that covers the nation just, um, just reflects on the fact that I think, you know, we're trying to have a, a larger and larger impact on the entire beef industry nationwide.